Hello everybody, I'm Anila Ali. First of all, I'd like to wish you a very happy Women's Day. Yes, it's a beautiful day for us to celebrate all our accomplishments, our hard work and our achievement. We haven't gained equal pay yet, but we will if we continue our efforts. Women's role in peacemaking. Well, women are uniquely positioned to take on that role of a peacemaker, of a bridge builder. We have the skills to be determined, to be organized and to be inclusive. We take care of our families. We know how to include our boys and our girls, our husbands and their families, us and our families. So it's so in any conflict mediation program, women should be included. They must be included. After all, women are the central figures in any peacemaking program. Now here's another thing to think about. Often women are the ones who suffer the most in any conflict. And so it becomes imperative for them to organize themselves. And they, when they get organized, they're able to protect and safeguard themselves, their families, their children, their relatives, um, seniors. And then you create this lasting peace. Let's not forget half of every community is women. And so any peacemaking process must have women as partners. But unfortunately, women even today face many, many obstacles. Gender-based violence, rape, discrimination, and many more. We also suffer from cultural restraints and cultural obstacles. A lot of times women who want to build peace, they are not able to travel to other countries or other cities. That is a restriction and it sort of stops them from, you know, um, enjoying those opportunities of meeting other people and using their skills to be um, good peacemakers. The other thing they also suffer from is that they don't have the capital. They also don't have healthcare a lot of times and they don't have training and they also don't have education. So giving them access to all of these skills that are necessary and the resources that are necessary to become effective uh, peacemakers should be the goal of any organization that is promoting peacemaking in women. We also have another problem. There's no monitoring of any gender-based agenda. So we don't know how these programs have run and we don't know what, what from these programs and what didn't. We have to develop a way to monitor programs, peace programs that are run by women. Another important aspect of empowering women, peacemakers and bridge builders is to strengthen them. Women also tend to be a lot of refugees, especially these displaced refugees. They're part of the community. They must be strengthened through multiple organizations, government, private partnerships and NGOs. And they also need financial support. Without the financial support, they will not be effective at peacemaking. So what do we do about it? Well, as a community, we need to establish mechanisms for enforcing the monitoring of, of such institutions that are there to protect women, to fight for women's rights, to make women peacemakers. We also have to very conscientiously support women coalition. Now, you know, that when you have a problem, you reach out to another woman. At least I do. 
My first call will be to my BFF. Because we know that women have a unique attitude, a unique empathy, a unique viewpoint, and that they will listen to you. And so it's really, really important to strengthen women's organizations, women's peacemaking, coalitions, and we have to teach women how to engage in conflict mediation, how to create safe spaces so that people, even if it's their own family, can have a discussion and be, you know, find solutions and find resolutions to conflicts. Engaging them with the right language, teaching them and training them to use the right language, the right tone, is also very, very important. Now, something that we don't have is preventing conflict. Those spaces do not exist. But I say in many ways they do. When we as women have an issue, we reach out to each other, we pick up the phone and we call each other. That's our safe space. But when it comes to a larger community, how do we apply that to the larger community? Well, we do that by strengthening these women's coalitions, peacemaking organizations, to provide that safe space for women to have a conversation. You know, you have teenagers, how to deal with teenagers, you know, mothers coming together and learning um, conflict mediation strategies about teenagers and how to deal with them, that would be a powerful tool for a mother who's got two teenagers, 14 going on to 44. So I think that is very, very important. I think also when we employ or when we engage women in peacemaking, they also have to be very diverse. They have to have multiple points of view because only then will we grow in our own spaces. Um, there'll be intellectual stimulation when you hear different points of view. And you will also be doing the higher level thinking as a woman saying, you know what, I agree with this viewpoint, but I don't agree with this. Um, do you think we could? These are all conflict mediation skills that we can transfer to women by engaging them and giving them the tools to have those effective conversations along with the semantics, the language, the body language, everything counts. So I feel that gender related issues they do get a lot of attention, um, but there has been a lot of shift and um, in the dynamics, especially since the present government has put an, a lot of an emphasis in women, um, and engage women, hire women, women at every level. And so that increases the chances of a community buy-in. I want to give you an example now. When we, as American Muslim Multi-Faith Women's Empowerment Council, many years ago when we were establishing ourselves as the voice for Muslim women at that time, we weren't multi-faith just then, um, we wanted to tackle issues like honor killings, um, women who get divorced get shunned, um, there is conflict between parents, girls who want to marry, out of their choice and mothers not allowing that. And yes, that was happening in America. So we decided that as a group of women, we're all mothers, we will start the conversation. And at one of our conferences, we made, made that the theme that, you know, our religion allows it, it's healthier, and we should allow our kids to make better choices and, and make their own choices and trust them to make their own choices. So by giving women a platform, the courage to stand with other women and tackle issues that they are uniquely positioned to solve and to discuss is the best, most effective 
tool that we can use to bring women into peacemaking. So women's inclusion is definitely a must. And if any peace process is going to succeed and is going to be long-term, you've got to have women. You've got to have it. Gender equal participation is extremely important. Now I'll tell you something, after 9-11, um, we as mothers were really, I was a public school teacher and I was very scared for the future of my kids. And I wanted to make sure that our kids are not marginalized and our kids are able to get government jobs and are able to feel like this is a part of their country. But I did not know how to reach out to, um, you know, the, the counter-terrorism uh, people in the DHS and Homeland Security and um, FBI. So I decided as a mother, I'm going to take the lead and I'm going to get other mothers to, to talk to them and to ensure that they understand that our view is different to a man's view and that we are uniquely positioned to talk about extremism. Why? Because we're on the front lines. The first indicators are seen of radicalization, of extremism, are seen by mothers. And so we asked to be included. No one was going to include us. Nobody was going to tell us, you nice women of Amwek, come and join us. Let's write policy on countering violent extremism. We formed a community of women, our organization, and we went to government and we said, we are the mothers. We need to be included in this conflict mediation or Country. At that time, it was called Countering Violent Extremism um, Summit. And we said, we want to be a part of the framework, the policy. We want to help you write that. So yes, a lot of times women will have to fight for that place because obviously we do not want to be on the menu. We want our voices. We want our viewpoints to be respected, to be included. And so a lot of research has shown that women in peacemaking are very focused and they're focused on reconciliation. A lot of times I feel like if we have a lot of men, um, sometimes we say as teachers, like things don't get done if you have too many men. But uh, when you have women, women know that they have limited time. They have a lot of expectations. They've got to go back home and do a ton of other things and make sure like there's food for the kids to eat. So women are always much more focused on tasks at hand than men. And that means their inclusion is going to make the peace process very effective. They also bring empathy. Women understand the economics they know that if they don't have enough money for food, they're gonna go out and work and get that for their family. They also believe in education and that aspect of justice and equality for all. Not that men do, don't, but women tend to believe in it more and practice it on the ground a lot more. You know, I'm, when you're dishing out food for your kids, you're gonna make sure that you give your kids equal. You may not have enough for yourself, but that's okay. But that's who we are. And so including us in that process is very, very important. In Colombia, there was um, women, uh, there was a program which included women peacemakers. And it was, um, it was sort of a conflict mediation program and it was done by the USIP. U.S. Institute of Peace, they taught women how to negotiate. They taught women how to use language. They taught women how to create ceasefires and conflicts and to find solutions for difficult, difficult crises like um, violence, uh, guns and drug trafficking in their community because it mattered to the women. It was their kids that were suffering. And so after, after the program became successful, these women were taken to the peace talks 
at, in Havana. If you all recall, Peace and Security Act of 2017 was passed by Senator Jean, um, initiated by Senator Jean Shaheen. And it, it said that women must play a role in sustaining peace. Without us, there is no lasting peace. I know that we have a long way to go, but I think this is a start that you're talking about it, I'm talking about it. This is unleashing our potential. Yes, we're hindered, we're restrained, but we're here to do that, unleash each other's potential. And especially in communities like mine, in Pakistani community, the Bangladeshi community, the Indian community, um, the Sri Lankan community, we have tons of conflicts in our community. A lot of them get filtered, but they still arrive into our diaspora communities in the United States. Because now we're a global world, we have many, many issues and conflicts coming. Well, unleash the potential of women, see them grow, teach them. And this strategy is going to be, it's going to make sense and it's going to be the best. With that, I end my um, presentation. I'm actually here in Peshawar and we are, are hosting the first round table in Peshawar on international religious freedom. And it is also inclusive, in, inclusive of women's rights and human rights. So um, I would love to share that with you next time. But for now, happy Women's Day from Anila Ali.